Oh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And even people who were, who, who were, it'd be hard to imagine that they were part of this, uh, 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 would, would, would get involved. Uh, so it was to totally classless. Uh, I mean, uh, it wasn't musicians and everybody else. It, uh, some of the people who were doing backstage work were part of this, and everybody would hang out together. And uh, um, I'm just trying to think of what. Uh, uh, my memory for names is not good. Uh, uh, the guitar player from the English guitar player. Oh, Mick Mick Ronson. Now here, now here's Mick Ronson, who had never played this kind of music really. Didn't know it. Didn't know anybody. But he knew, I think he knew Bobby Newworth, who was, who had uh, put together some of the band. And, and, uh, and Mick said he'd go along. Well, Mick really was different from everybody else. I mean, you know, Mick was, was Rolling Stones rock and roll, you know? And, and he came thinner than thin, and, you know, in velvet pants and, and the long blonde hair. <laughs> and, but he got, he got with it too. He just sort of became part of this mess that we were making, you know? And he loved it. He just thought it was as wonderful as could be. And, and, uh, and it became, I, I was saying, even, 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 even if you were from another world, you came in and, and it, was, it was infectious. So, this became this rolling thunder. It was just it just kept on rolling, and uh, we had to finish finally at the garden. I guess uh, if we didn't do that, we'd probably still be going. I, <laughs> I mean, it was tiring, you know. But but everybody was having such a good time. I think we could have gone on and on and on. It, if it was, it was a fake hoot nanny. In the sense that it was all very, it was all staged, it was all worked out beforehand, and the idea was to give the impression that it was just happening by accident, and uh, it never was, of course, uh, um, and and I say of course, it just never was. Uh, but um, Bob had very little to do with putting together the show. He just. He, when we started to put together the show, he just wanted to to be to do his part in it. His that's all. And uh, when it's time for him to go on, he would go on. Um, I, uh, I, there's a big difference between uh, the stuff on Desire, which is much smoother and cooler, and the, the way he sang these things uh, on the road. The, with, the, the, Makes sense. I mean, he's singing for this audience, and the audience is out there, and they were yelling various things at him. There's one one thing I just heard um, some guy yells, "How about a protest song?" And Bob says before he, he does the next song, "Okay, here's one for you." And then everything gets quiet, and he sings, "Oh, sister." So you know, it's it's a it's a kind of a, a different. It's a different relationship, you know. There was no audience except myself and a few other people sitting there in the in the studio, and of course, here are all these other people screaming and yelling and listening to the song. And there was also the excitement, which Bob has done many times, of singing new material for people, complicated material that they had to listen to, otherwise they wouldn't get it. Uh, uh, when he first does Hurricane. Uh, one of the early versions of Hurricane, he says before, before he sings the song, if any of you out there have any legal connections, uh, we'd, like some, we'd like some help trying to get this guy out of jail. Uh, and, you know, and uh, that's, that's, as you well know, that's not the usual thing that he would do when he introduced the song. Uh, but he, uh, he I think he felt he felt very free uh, because he didn't have the responsibility of having to keep all the show together, uh, and uh, and and he knew that I would take care of that, and so he could just do his thing, and I think he liked that idea very much. 
Um, I remember when we were rehearsing in New York before we went out, um, his managers came to see the show and they were watching and they asked him what in the world I was doing because I was getting paid, you know, I mean, I was directing it and they said, they were in the music business and they didn't really understand what I was supposed to be doing. And uh, he said, well, he's in charge of this whole thing. And they assumed he would be in, Bob would be in charge. And he said, no, no, he's the one, you know. So they came to me and they said, okay, as if to say, okay, you can do it. But they, they didn't really have the say so. I think the Hootenanny idea, uh, the disorganization of a Hootenanny, uh, is that you wind up spending, it, it's characterized by the fact that you wind up spending more time waiting than hearing something. And as I said before, that's something I didn't want. Um, I didn't want people to spend their good money to wait around and watch people get ready to sing something. So they got a lot of show for their money, put it that way. This, this, oh, the Rolling Thunder was always very long. It always ran at least four hours. And uh, it, it, was wor it was worth the money.